We're back with the two men who want to replace Tom Swasey. Mr. Santos, voters are concerned about the state of our democracy. The January 6th hearings have blamed Donald Trump for his involvement. Fair or not fair? Look, I think it's prerogative of the committee, right? If they, if they have enough corroborated evidence and they want to put that blame on Donald Trump, that's on them. Uh, look. Do you blame Donald Trump? I look at it this way. I, I can't blame one person for every each individual person's individual responsibility on that day. But I would have not gone into the, the Capitol. Let's be very George, honest. George, you defended Donald Trump. Oh, you said his speech said to Laura Trump in a TV interview, his speech was Donald Trump at his most awesomeness. You were there at the stop. He was energized. He was there, you were there at the great, stop the steel great rally. At the you actually, uh, you actually the paid the legal fees. No, I did you, not. You said so once again no, on the video. I did not. I can read you the quote. I, you read George, the quote all you want. I did not pay a single legal fee. You said you paid the legal fees to get a ton of them out. These were people whose violence, in fact, you even defended their being in the Capitol. These people whose violence was so extreme that police officers were killed and over 100 police officers were injured. Yet, despite that, you posted bail. You got the, you put the, I did put, not post bail for anyone, you paid, Robert. You That's paid their legal fees to get them. And you oh, know it. Here's the quote, George. I'm you glad to share it, it with you. The problem with you is, Robert, you want to read quotes all you want. The reality is, your quotes. you don't want to be genuine with the American people. That's why the rank and file of every single law, major law enforcement union on Long Island has endorsed me over you because they know I stand with them. I don't, I don't bow, I don't bend, George, I don't play when games, George, when I don't you play support political when you nuclear support, when you football post, when you pay with the, law enforcement when you pay like legal, you and your party do. When you pay legal fees to get people out of jail who, who attack police I did not and pay kill legal police, fees. you said so publicly. When you say that, Robert, George, you, you, you wanted George, to you're not standing up for the police. guy, come you on, Robert. You supported the big lie. You stood up for the, it was, you, you stood supported up for the, the guy who created the bill who made law enforcement officers less safe, who's killed law enforcement all across this state. George, I didn't. George, you know very George, well. You know damn well. Excuse you know, my language. Oh, come on, George, now we're going to go to that. George, you know very well, and this is critical because it's about our democracy. The fact that you supported the effort to overturn the election. I did not support any effort to overturn any election, unlike you, who for 16 years denied the 2000 election, saying Al Gore won that race. Here's your quote, November 6, 2020. Robert. The rampant fraud of these elections is frightening. I urge the FBI, CIA, and DOJ to intervene. Stop the counting of illegal votes. You even said when you lost for Congress by 13 percent, the election was stolen from you too. Robert, when you, when you I never undermine, was, I, I couldn't, when you I to undermine our democracy. Tom Swazi two days after the absentee ballots were open. How did that I contend? George, do you have an honest moment inside George, of you ever George, when you're the campaigning? The very idea that you would try to undermine our democracy. And I never undermined our democracy. Do you know why? Because I live the American dream that you yeah, and your party you are trying you defend, to diminish for the next generation. You, let me tell you something, George. I never once When you, de I never when you once support people who attack anything. our police. No, I did not. You did? No, I did not. It's a video it was a, Newsday posted, It was George. my party Gentlemen. who supported the riots of New York City and the Here countless we go with police another officers. distraction. There we go again, George. Robert, you're the party of distraction. Let's talk about inflation and crime, which really matter. We, we have to get another question. Okay. So, Mr. Zimmerman, voters in your district are really fed up with the dysfunction in Washington. I am, they too. They think that politicians are liars. What will you do to change that impression? You know, something the most important thing we can do is try to bring back bipartisan dialogue, bipartisan work. I'm very proud of the fact that even before this campaign began, I've been recognized by Republicans in Congress for working with them in a bipartisan way. But not I, one of them endorsed you. Mr. Excuse, me, excuse me. I work with Peter King to, to break a congressional deadlock for the Zaroga 9-11 health bill to help those afflicted with cancer at the site. I've been praised by local Republicans in Nassau County for working in a bipartisan way the pandemic. George, you can't point Name to one. Name one that endorsed you, Robert. Of course not. They Peter King endorsed me. What would you do to end dysfunction? What would you do to end dysfunction? We need in fresh in new Washington. leadership. Robert is more of the old same party. He's been in he's been in politics for 30 years. I'm a private sector guy. I was born and raised in, in abject poverty in this country and only in this country that somebody who comes from a basement apartment in Jackson Heights like I did is able to rise to become a successful business person to then run for United States Congress. I but want solutions. I don't want, want I don't want Michigan. I don't want George, talking points like Robert does all the George, time. Can you I don't name, make a can, living George, off of this. Can you name one Democrat in Congress or one Democratic local official who will give you credit for working in a bipartisan way? You can't name one. North Hempstead Town Supervisor she's Jen DeSena. She's a registered Democrat she and you know it. She a Republican. Oh, she was a Wilson Pakula. She's a registered Democrat the and you know it. The bottom line is this Stop. is not a game. Robert, We've got to restore where were you when we were working dialogue. together with Judy Bosworth to end the floodgates that they were trying to install in Great Neck? You I were, work, you I were, were a no-show. You were a no-show. You were a no-show on the issue that George, would have caused mass flooding in North George, Hempstead and you know it. You asked Judy Bosworth who worked with her. She'll tell you I did. You were nowhere to be seen. The reality is I was there in the front line to fend off the Army Corps of Engineers. And what worries me is people watch and they see two people arguing. At the end of the day, we've got to restore 
bipartisan dialogue. We've got to restore respect for each other's points of view. I've done that. I've been recognized for it. Regrettably, George, you embrace Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh, the QAnon on. congresswoman. You, you put out a tweet with Rashida Tlaib, I Omar, I never and AOC. People. I never you, met these you people, George. You work with the squad, the most anti-Semitic people running in the I'm most George. conservatively Jewish district I'm in George. America. Come you're, on, just being, you're just being no, deceitful. You're being disingenuous. All right, guys, let's let's be but I do want to make a point. You put out a tweet saying you were proud of Marjorie Taylor Greene and you liked her more than other Republicans. This is after the Republican leadership denounced her for anti-Semitism. I mean, that's just so are shameful. You, are you calling me anti-Semitic? No, like you, you also called no. me homophobic recently well, on your you social media? Homo I said you support no, I homophobes. Not. That's Marjorie not true. Taylor I'm a gay married man, Robert. Marjorie, Have an honest conversation with Marjorie yourself again. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Getz, these are leading homophobes in Congress, yet you embrace them. You're proud of your <laughs> affiliation with them. I took on the squad. I, I condemned no, them not. for their positions. No, you did not. And you know that really well. So look, let's move on because Why? We're having so it's much really fun. <laughs> so look, Mr. Zimmerman, as the anniversary of Superstorm Sandy approaches, do you believe we're in a situation where we can just climate change or the economy, or can we deal with both at the same time? We have no choice but to deal with both. I mean, I know the record Superstorm Sandy brought. In fact, we've seen since that time, we've seen violent, severe weather. 11 people died living in basement apartments in Queens about a year and a half ago. I'm a small business owner for 33 years. Small businesses are damaged, homes are damaged, people's lives are destroyed over severe weather. George doesn't agree that the climate crisis is real. When he was asked that, he declined to answer that question. So we're, we're going to let him answer it now. We have to deal with, we have to deal with through the infrastructure bill, rebuilding our economy, and we also have to do that by creating clean energy union jobs transitioning Mr. to a new economy. Santos. The reality is the climate cycle is, is forever changing and we have to find a way to mitigate the effects of climate cycle in this country. Can we deal with the both? Can we deal with the we economy can deal with both. and yes, climate we change? How? We just can't be extreme like the Democrat Party that wants to stop immediate fossil fuel exploration and, and convert to, in a very short window of time to renewable energy. I believe in the process no of, one of is renewable energy. That, George. Of course you are. Look at the state of our country. It's three George. times Three times you more expensive. You still will not recognize the climate winter. crisis is real. I am not you still saying will that. Not say You're putting words in my mouth no, you like just, you've you put were this just entire asked the campaign. Do my we, answer was, climate, George, we'll we try can, it a third time. I'm not answering your questions. I'm answering Marsha's <laughs> questions, Robert. She asked if there's a oh, climate crisis. You won't acknowledge it. All right, let me, let's move on. We'll go, we'll go, we, I think we can get to one more topic. <laughs> Many people, Mr. Zimmerman, are demanding that President Biden shut the southern border. Do you agree? But also, should the migrants arriving here in New York City uh, some of them be brought to Long Island to your district. Well, look, we need a national policy to deal with this issue. We need a national agenda. Of course, we have to do more to secure our border. We have to do it by having greater surveillance at the legal checkpoints, greater, more personnel at the border, and we also have to deal with drone surveillance as well for our airports and harbors as well. But as far as those who come here to seek asylum, the most effective way to deal with that is to have a much greater, much bigger asylum process, more asylum judges, a greater infrastructure to deal with them. Because, frankly, people are coming here seeking asylum, which is their constitutional right, but they're here for years because the process is so long. Mr. So Santos, my point who's to you going is to pay for all of this? The reality is we need to shut the border and have a, a controlled environment at the southern border. It's a humanitarian crisis, Robert. Your party and you fail to see what that. What about our harbors and airports you, where fentanyl's coming in as well? Yeah, fentanyl's we coming in far view. more from the southern border and killing our youth we in our district. We should have to make a choice, the George. Other day this is said, a national the other, urgency. The other day you said it was a scare tactic no, of mine and fear-mongering. 6,700 no, youth died in our country this year. you don't want to deal with and overdoses of fentanyl. Of course I do. We no. need to secure the border should once any, and for should, all. Should any of the migrants coming into New York City be brought to Long Island? They should not. Why? We don't have the infrastructure, Marsha. That's a reality. Look, Where are we re going to put them? The reality is... Should they go to Long Island? The reality is it's up to our local governments Answer to work with... Answer her question. Our, I am answering the question. It's up to our local governments to work with our federal government on this issue. We did a national policy to address this. Most local places, some many, many local places can't afford, so, can't afford the... I don't have the infrastructure to take care of them. We're going to have to leave it right here. Um, we are going to have to leave it right here, but our conversation <laughs> but you're continues having so much fun. right after the show on our streaming network, CBS News New York. We'll be right back. <laughs>